Well, hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Innovation. I am so excited to be here today. Today, we are going to talk about an innovation in movies. They do these really cool special effects, and many of them involve computers and CGI effects. But today, we're going to look at how we could do some innovative movie effects at home without having to have a whole bunch of expensive software and expensive cameras. So first, I'm going to draw a little bit of a picture here for you. Let me turn on my screen and here we go. I think if you look carefully, this character may look familiar to you. Not meant to resemble anybody in particular. Hmm? Now let me grab him and throw him onto the stage. And here we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I didn't mean to be playing that. That's... No, 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 no. no. Yeah. yeah. No. Here's my friend, Bogert. Well, thank you, Mr. McLaughlin, for introducing me. I am here to... Sh wait a minute. Where's the color? Could you please add some color, Mr. McLaughlin? Yeah, oh, yep, sorry, forgot. Here's your color. I'm gonna get in the costume and I'll be right back. That sounds like a great idea. You get in your costume. I am gonna tell our audience about some special movie effects. Here we go. So let's bring our friend back, I am Innovator, to work with me to show you some of these special effects. I am... Well, thank you, Mogert, for that wonderful introduction. And today we are here to film our episode called A New Hope. And we are going to talk about special effects in video. Now, the first special effect that we're going to look at is time-lapse, speeding up the video. So let's go and take a look at that and see how Mr. McLaughlin drew that picture of our friend here really, really fast. So the first thing Mr. McLaughlin did is went to clipchamp.com and then he signed in with his Google account. Once signed in, it creates a new project for us and we have to tell them that we're going to be a teacher or a student and we have to say how often we want to create videos let's say weekly and then it brings us to a starting template and we're going to click create a video once we've clicked create a video we have to choose a size that we want and then we are going to go through and take a look at the different tools that we have here we can find video audio and more we can add video to our project. We, this is our timeline down here where we can undo and redo changes. This is where you can split your clip. This is copy and paste. This is allows you to navigate your timeline to zoom in and out. Up here, we can change the aspect ratio. So it's like a vertical or a square. And then finally, we're gonna wanna export our video. So Mr. McLaughlin went through and added the video. Oh, first he wanted to try out the webcam. So he went and clicked on a webcam and clicked allow. You have to make sure you do that. And then you could record your own video right from the webcam. But instead of doing that, Mr. McLaughlin had already drawn a picture. So he opened up that video of him drawing the picture of our friend here, Gogurt. Uh, the name is Mogurt, not Gogurt. Uh, so anyway, as he was saying, I am, you first go ahead and open the video and it prepares the video and puts it into our media section. So here is the video of me being drawn. And then we're gonna drag the video into the timeline. And now we have our video here and we can edit our video. We can change its properties and one of the cool things we can do is change layouts and Mr. McLaughlin goes ahead and transforms it so it fits into the right size. Then we can also go into filters and color balance 
and all kinds of different tools. We can fade in and out. We can speed it up. Now this is what Mr. McLaughlin did. He took the speed and made it really fast. So that way you could see him drawing at a super high speed. See how it's getting smaller on the timeline? Right, Moger. So then Mr. McLaughlin takes the scene and wants to make that video fill the entire screen. So he goes to the transform and clicks on crop to fill. And then that fills the rest of the screen. And when he plays it, you can see that as he goes through, it has sped up the whole drawing process, which took a couple minutes to do to like 23 seconds and poof. He's done drawing the picture. Now, the only thing is it's kind of upside down. So he needs to go in and fix that a little bit so it's not upside down. We're gonna go to transform again and we're gonna rotate it and flip it around. And poof, now it is, oh, nope, now it's still kind of sideways. Let's do it one more time. There we go. And now it looks like he is drawing right on the paper and that is perfect. Then we just hit export and it'll take a couple minutes to render and it will save. We only have one resolution that we can pick that's it, unfortunately. And it will save to his computer. Now you can also share it. There's a link. And this is a little survey he wants us to fill out. Let's see, do you know, there are templates, yep. What kinds of videos are you looking to create? School videos and for myself. Um, looks great, submit. So we can enable sharing and that means we can send the link. We don't have to download it to our computer. Most of you are working on a Chromebook and you want to use this feature of sharing so that way you don't have to save the video on your computer. And then that's it. It's all created. Yep, I am. Mr. McLaughlin did a fantastic job with that video. So now he is going to save it to the computer and it saves and we can open it and we can copy the link and just click and paste the link into the browser and it'll open up and we can see the video was created in our clip chat. Awesome. That's fantastic. Look at me. I look awesome. Wonderful. So this is the first effect we're going to look at. It is Mr. McLaughlin running at high speed. So how do we make that happen? So we're going to first start with a video. And we're going to go and look for our video clip that we took. Let's see. In this folder here. There we go. So first is Mr. McLaughlin in a green screen. And what we're going to do is put that video into the timeline and drag it right down here. There you go. Next, we're going to go to the filters and apply the green screen filter. Now, this doesn't always work well because the greens aren't perfect. So this is free software and there are some issues with it. So what we're going to do to make this better, to make that green screen really work effectively, is we're going to go into the color balance and we're going to adjust the color. We're going to increase the saturation and we are going to um, change the temperature and decrease the temperature. And maybe you want to increase the contrast a little bit as well. Perfect. So now we're going to save this movie and build it. And then we're going to bring it back into the same software. So I'm just going to save it and download it. There we go. And then we're going to start a new project and bring in the video that we just made. Let me go find this here. There I am. So you can see the difference. This one is much brighter. So we're gonna get rid of the old one and put it in a new one. And this time we're gonna add in our filter. And we have our green screen. So now that we have our filter, you can see that Mr. McLaughlin is running around with nothing behind him. 
the next step is to go ahead and add in a background for him to run on. So let me do a little bit of editing here just to shorten our video a little bit because we don't need all of this. And we're going to take a section of it just to repeat. So we have a part of it going over and over again to get him run for a little bit longer. About 20 seconds or so is what I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. You can see me running. And now let's add in our background. So we're going to look for a video that we took while we were driving the car. Now you could do this while running through the yard. You could do this while riding um, maybe a scooter or something. Just be careful. And maybe you can enlist your parents to help you with the car part. And you could record you running, sort of, by recording the video of you driving. And then I'm going to just move this video into here. And I want to apply a speed effect just to speed it up a little bit so it goes a little bit faster and kind of really makes it look like Mr. McLaughlin is running super, super fast. And we're going to speed these up a little bit. Maybe not that much. It looks pretty good. We're going to do the same thing with the other clip and speed that up. So everything fits nicely. And we're going to go in and add some fades so that way Mr. McLaughlin doesn't just magically appear. That looks pretty good. You may have to cut that beginning part out where I'm just, Mr. McLaughlin is just standing still. We're getting closer. Add another version. So he runs a little bit longer. And finally record the fades like we said we were going to. Add those in. What the fade effect does is it makes it fade from black, so that way it's not just a harsh cut. So we want to put those in carefully. And you want to fade in and fade out, so we can do both those options. On both the background and on the video of Mr. McLaughlin. We don't want one to fade in and not the other. And there we go. We have pretty much the whole product. So the next step would be to take all of this video and put it with something to get it so it's not just Mr. McLaughlin running on a street really, really fast. We want to be able to get this so Mr. McLaughlin is in a full scene where he is became, became the Flash. So let's work on doing that next. super cool. Wow, that was really awesome. So now we're going to start building that effect. So what we did is we took a whole bunch of video of Mr. McLaughlin walking out the door, walking down the stairs, did it from a couple camera angles. Then what we did is we took each clip, sped it up, made it faster, and then to make it really have that special effect where he's going super, super fast is we go in and we use what's called the splicing tool and we slice up the video and we're going to delete sections of the video to make it look a little bit more jumpy. Now, the only 
thing you have to be careful of is that the character, in this case, Mr. McLaughlin, who is going to be the person running really fast, can really be the only thing moving in the scene. If you have other things moving in the scene, what ends up happening is the illusion kind of gets messed up because they're moving in, in kind of a jumpy way and that won't make any sense that they're moving at full super speed. It should really just be Mr. McLaughlin moving at full speed. So we want to make sure all those other things are left stationary in the scene. And you can see as we go through this, he's running outside. And then really all he did was just kind of run around the driveway and then run back up from the truck. But we want to make it look like he ran down the road. So we're going to insert the video we made before and move these video clips out of the way and put that in. Speed those up. Now we just got to add in the last piece where he runs back up around the truck and comes back into the house. Now, the last thing that was done to kind of make this a little bit more exciting was we added in a sound clip and you can find free music online to really make this cool and interesting. So that gives us the entire complete effect of Mr. McLaughlin as the Flash. So we got one more video trick that we want to look at before we finish out our epic movie. In this next effect, we're going to show what's called force perspective. This is when you take something that is small and make it look really big and something that is big and make it look really small. They use this to great effect in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where they took some people and made them look really, really small and made some other people made them look really, really big. But there was no real special effect there. There's no computer effects. They didn't shrink anybody in film. What they did is what's called forced perspective. Here's what it looks like. So what you have here is a regular empty glass of water. And then Mr. McLaughlin jumps in and starts swimming. It looks like he is super tiny to fit inside that glass of water. And that's what we call force perspective. So let's see how we went ahead and made that effect. So the first thing we needed to do was to decide what size screen we wanted. So we were going to choose the wide screen. So that way we could get the best effect. And it's also the way we had the camera turn when we filmed it. So we look for the video that has the complete film of Mr. McLaughlin in the glass. And this is where you get to see how the trick is done. It's actually pretty simple. What we do is we have Mr. McLaughlin stand in the yard and move around in the background the far distance until it looks like he is inside the glass. So he starts here and he kind of backs up. And as he's backing up, he looks like he's getting smaller and smaller. But we can kind of still see him on the sides because of the way of the perspective of the glass. So that didn't work. So we had to move over a little bit. So there's some trial and error here. You can see his arms poking out the side. So we're looking for the spot. Oh, there it is. And now it looks like he's really inside the glass. So we're going to trim the film right here to make sure we have the correct frame. We're going to line it up. And then we just have Mr. McLaughlin in the glass swimming and nothing else. So we hit the little trim button. And then we're going to go back to the beginning to the empty glass. And we're going to trim that part. So it looks like the glass is empty and then Mr. McLaughlin falls in. We don't want anything of Mr. McLaughlin in the large size. And there he is. And then what we're going to do is go through to the end of the clip and just cut out the part where he moves again. So that way he's not coming out of frame of the glass. So we'll go to the end and see, look, there he is. So we're going to trim it right there. And there we go. We have the complete effect of Mr. McLaughlin swimming in the glass. Now, if you want to get a little fancy, you can't do it in this software. But you could see Mr. McLaughlin at one point jumps up in the air. And to make that happen, what we did is we just had him jump at the beginning of the film. And then that way it looks like that he is actually jumping into the glass. And you can add some sound effects of some splashing noises.
to make it sound like he's actually fallen into the glass. So for this next part, let's welcome back our coder, Sarah Star Coder. Come on in, Sarah. Welcome, Sarah, to the stage. It is nice to meet you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate the warm welcome. So today what we're going to do is look at how to do some force perspective effects in Scratch. And we're going to play a lot with the block down here with the characters, our little cat, and we're gonna affect the size a lot because it's really the size that's gonna dictate how our cat looks like its perspective has changed with regards to the rest of the environment. So to do this, let me shrink this down again. And we're gonna start with a nice background. So we'll go through and find a good background. Ooh, let's do a surprise, that sounds fun. Oh, he's going to be in the Arctic. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to start with the cat close to the front of the scene. And we want to make the cat look like he's going to walk through the snow and then under this overpass here. And then we want to make him kind of like disappear around the corner. So to do that, we're going to start simple with have the cat gliding to a particular position. So we're gonna to go to events, when green flight clicked, and the position we want the cat to go to is not the current position. We want it to go to way over here in this corner position, like that. So that number is 154 and 62. So I also want it to go to its starting position when the game first starts. So negative 148 and negative 123 is where it started. And its current position is 154 and the Y value is 62. So now we have it going to that and we could choose the timing in a little bit. We'll come back to do that. The next thing we need to do is get the cat to change its size over time as it goes to here. So we need a loop. And we'll just do a forever loop for now. And we want to go into looks and we want to have it change its size by 10. And we might have to adjust that later. We want to have it change its size by 10, but we want to actually get smaller. So we're going to change that to a negative 10. And we also want to tie that to when green flag clicked. So this is our code so far. Make it bigger so you can see it. We're going to go to this starting spot and then we're going to glide to the spot over there. And we should probably put in a weight so it doesn't happen super, super fast. So we'll put in a weight just so we can slow things down according to the animation. So we'll do 0.25, a quarter of a second. Let's just click and see what that looks like. Oh, almost. So we need to make this shrinking happen faster. So we're gonna go 0.1. And we need to make this happen a little slower. So let's go to three seconds. Hit green flag. Oh, we forgot to change the size back to normal. So we're gonna go to looks and we're going to set size at 100% at the very beginning so that way he starts at the right size. Maybe too fast he shrunk and it looks like he's going way up here in the corner. So we don't want him going up there. We actually want him there about ready to walk off the edge. I don't know if you could see that but we want to make sure that when he's small he really stays on the ground. So I want to check that position again. It looks like it's 156 and 23. So let's change this number a little bit. 156 and the Y value is 23. Because he's smaller, he has to go a little bit lower on the screen. So let's try that again. And it looks like that kind of worked. We might want to slow this down a little bit more. Let's say six seconds. And I think I might want to put this back up a little bit to two seconds. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I, 
think I want to slow the shrinking down so it doesn't happen that fast at all. Let's try that again. That looks pretty good. And what we want to do next is give our character some animation. So we're going to do another event when green flag clicked. And we want to put another loop in. I like keeping these loops separate so I can see what's going on and can control that. And then that way all the events happen at the same time. Because that's what we want to happen. Everything has to happen at the same time. And we're going to have it switch its costume. So that's in looks and just go to the next costume. That works. And then we might want to put a weight in there so his feet don't move super, super fast. And I'm going to just use the same wait time as the changing effect of the size. So let's see what that looks like. Mm, that might be a little slow for his feet. So let's move that up to 0.1 seconds. And there we go. It looks like our cat is running off into the distance and running behind the little dune there. So that's force perspective where we're changing the size of our cat. Now, the way we would do that in film is we wouldn't actually change the size of the cat. We would move the camera. So we would move the camera so it looks like the camera is further, so the cat is further away rather than close up. And that's how we would do that with film. So for example, we would put somebody who's tall, like an adult, in a chair that is really far away from the camera and somebody who's shorter like a little kid maybe standing up and then the little kid would look bigger in the scene than the little adult sitting in a little chair that's far away so that would be how you would end up making your scene for forced perspective so i hope you enjoyed that and um i'm gonna be done sarah that was really cool i'm so excited to go try that on my own I couldn't agree with you more, Mogert. That was awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us, Sarah. Thank you, everyone, for watching our episode today. And keep coding, keep learning. Bye, Bye for now. now.